I just did an infinite number of things. Don't believe me? I'll do it again. Huh? Was that infinity as good for you as it was for me? Curiosity Save the Cat and Stephen Lorman both asked, can you do a video on Zeno's paradox? The act of me turning around in my chair is what's called a super task. As Michael explains on Vsauce, a super task is a task that requires an infinite number of actions in order to complete. But how is me turning around in my chair an infinite number of actions? Seems like just one. Here's the deal. In order for me to turn around in my chair, I must first reach the halfway point of that turn. From there, I have to reach the halfway point of that half turn, and from there, that can be divided in half, and that one, and so on, and so on, and so on, into infinity. But if I must pass through an infinite number of points, how can I ever actually finish the task? Because infinity is... a lot. That question was put forth by Zeno. And no, not Zenu, the galactic overlord whose dastardly plan to wipe out humanity was to kill a bunch of prehistoric people hundreds of thousands of years ago and then brainwash their souls and implant them into modern humans which causes all of our suffering and insecurities today. Not that guy. No, we're talking about Zeno, a Greek philosopher in 460 BCE. Zeno was a disciple of, uh, well, maybe not disciple, maybe more like devout follower. He was in a cult. Back in ancient Greece, hero cults were a thing, and a really big thing, and a hero in ancient Greece was somebody who was a human that died but was now revered sort of like a god, somewhere between man and god. And followers would build temples in their names, they'd create churches around them, and really devout followers would pledge their entire lives to their ideals. Remember, this was pre-Christian times, just imagine hundreds of little Christianities running all over the place. That was ancient Greece. But Zeno was a part of the first known hero cult established around a philosopher. A philosopher named Amanius of Alea, who established the Eleatic school of philosophy. The Eleatics, which were led by the philosopher Parmenides, believed that the senses can't be trusted to discern truth. They believed that truth can only be found by logic and reason. And they also believe that change, and even motion, is nothing but an illusion caused by our senses. To prove this idea, Zeno created a series of paradoxes, the most famous ones being the arrow paradox and the Achilles and the tortoise paradox. Much like my spinning example earlier, the arrow paradox says that for an arrow to get from the bow to the target, it must pass through an infinite number of halfway points to get there. And the Achilles and the tortoise paradox takes the use of movement a little bit further by saying that if Achilles were racing a tortoise and gave the tortoise a head start, that every time he got halfway to the tortoise, the tortoise would have moved forward a small amount. Therefore, even though he's going much faster, could he ever actually catch the tortoise? Now, logic says that of course the arrow reaches the target. There's no invisible force there keeping it from touching the target once it gets there. And of course Achilles beats the tortoise because he's going much faster. Assuming, of course, he doesn't hurt his heel. Now, these are some of the first examples of a rhetorical device called reductio ad absurdum, which basically means you disprove an argument by showing that carrying it out to its extreme leads to an absurd result. Other versions of this that came along later include Gabriel's cake, which says that if you take a cake and slice it in half an infinite number of times, and then stack those pieces up on top of each other, that the stack of cake would reach all the way across the universe. Now, these are all space paradoxes, but there's also a time paradox called Thompson's lamp. Thompson's lamp says that if you take a finite amount of time, let's say a minute, and you turn a lamp on and off every halfway point, so you turn it on at 30 seconds, turn it off at 15 seconds, turn it back on at 7.5 seconds, and so on, an infinite number of times, when you get to the end of that minute, is the lamp on or off? I know, right? Now, there have been countless resolutions of Zeno's paradoxes over the years, with some philosophers just leading to the point where they just say that time and space don't exist at all which is kind of Zeno's point in the first place. But there are some mathematical constructs that have tried to prove that the sum of infinitely decreasing quantities could result in a finite number. And there's an idea of a limiting value to an infinite process, which is central to the idea behind calculus, which relies on infinitesimals in order to create an, a finite value from an infinite number of steps. Thanks, Sir Isaac Newton. But maybe the easiest answer is that you just can't divide time and space forever. Maybe there is a real physical limit to smallness. Enter Max Planck. Max Planck was one of the most substantial physicists of the early 20th century, and he came up with what he called the Planck length, which is the smallest element of space. The Planck length is insanely small. It's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 35th meters long. To give you an idea of how small that is, this is the size of a proton. In order to get to the Planck length, you have to add not 5, not 10, not 15, 
but 20 zeros to that. It is 100 quintillionth the size of a proton. And from there he created Planck time, the amount of time it takes for light to travel one Planck length. So if there really is a smallest indivisible unit of space and time, then Zeno's paradox is solved. But some aren't quite so sure. Some say that Planck's length isn't the smallest possible measure that mathematically you can divide even further. But the thing is, we'll never really know because it's impossible to get down to that size to measure it. So ultimately, this is just one of those questions that we've come up to think about that has no real bearing on our lives or the universe in general. Perhaps the most amazing thing about Zeno's paradox is just the fact that this weird collection of particles was able to think it up in the first place. Because if there is anything that makes us human, it's our ability to make up problems that don't really exist. Thanks everybody for watching. If this is your first time here, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you check out some of my other videos and perhaps subscribe because I come out with stuff like this every Monday. Special thanks as always to the answer files on Patreon that help keep these videos coming. If you would like to support the channel and get access to a vlog that is for Patreon people only, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Like, comment, and share. And if you have a question you would like answered, just ask it down in the comments and it could be featured in a future video. Until next time, you guys have an eye-opening week and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.